Let's talk about coronavirus and a forum yes. that's happening later uh, today here at Media General in collaboration with Vodafone. Now, we all have the statistics that indicates that over 72,000 people have been confirmed as having uh, coronavirus. And out of that, about 1,800 or so have been confirmed dead. Now, every province in China is said to have confirmed a case of coronavirus. And a lot of people have been worried. Many countries, over two dozen of them, have also confirmed cases of that. We don't have any confirmed cases in Ghana yet, but the question still remains. Are we well equipped should in case we confirm any case as such in the country? And so we're talking about emerging infectious diseases and what exactly it is that the country can do in order to handle this, these issues as well. And that's what the forum is about later today. So I have Sedem Ofori, he's the head news planning. And also Daniel Asiedu is from Vodafone. He's external communications manager. Thank you for joining me, by the way. Good to have you. Yeah. yeah, I know, finally. First time. Uh, first time having this interaction on TV. But Sedem, tell me about this forum. This is a thought leadership series. Yes, it's, um, it's one of the topics we're having in our thought leadership okay. uh, series. We've been running this series since uh, 2016. Okay. And uh, it's basically a platform for us to discuss the most important issue of the day, mm -hmm. uh, both from the perspective of experts, people yeah. who are engaged with it in the fields, and then also from the general public's perspective. Okay. So with uh, this coronavirus issue, it's the biggest global yeah. health crisis mm -hmm. okay. at the moment. And um, uh, we thought it was important for us to hone in on that issue, bring together the people who are engaged on a daily basis when okay. dealing with it, uh, and the public, bring them all together to have a conversation around it, which is basically the point of our thought leadership. I see. In that series, yeah. Okay, so it's happening later today. It's happening later we'll today. We'll give the details and on that, but let me just ask, um, you know, Mr. Siedu, why Vodafone partnered with Media General for so, this? So, um, at Vodafone, we are very passionate about it, and I believe we've seen a number of initiatives that we've introduced, including Healthline, okay, yeah. which is one of the key platforms we use to create awareness about various, you know, diseases and ailments. And um, when it comes to diseases like corona, um, just touching on Ebola, when during the Ebola outbreak, we were also in the front in terms of using our platforms to so support government efforts in yeah. creating awareness, providing technical knowledge. So this is something we'll be doing over the period. And we thought, you know, there's a good platform to partner TV3 on to All right. create that awareness and see what we can do as a country to support. There's been a major concern about the students, the Ghanaian students who are stuck in China and unfortunately would not be brought home just yet because Ghana says they are not really ready yeah. for any emergency cases. I know we'll be discussing this later on, but I just wanted to pick your thoughts on this. Um, what you think about how we're handling these students and whether they should be brought back home immediately or we should hold on? Well, I'll look at the subliminal message okay. behind this. Uh, I think it begs the question as to our readiness to deal with this issue. Can we contain it? Should yeah. uh, COVID-19 or coronavirus yeah. uh, happen in Ghana? Uh, it, it speaks volumes about perhaps our preparedness. We are not the only country that is handling this uh, with the panic button. Yeah. Uh, United States has a cruise liner, okay, that is somewhere mm -hmm. out at sea, okay. where a good number of citizens there because there was an outbreak on the ship, mm -hmm. and we are trying to make sure that it doesn't get it into doesn't the United into States. Mm. Um, sh shortly before this, also there was a flight that was coming in, uh, an Emirates flight mm -hmm. that was yeah. coming into the into New York, yeah. and uh, that fl that flight was impounded. Mm -hmm. Everybody on board had to be tested uh, before allowed into the country. Yeah. It just goes to show that it's not an easy ride for any country. I mean, even with the United States of America, which can boast of one of the most advanced yeah, yeah, yeah. public emergency yeah. you know, management Absolutely. systems, uh, even they are handling yeah, this with a pint of salt. So I think there's a case to be made for both those who fear that we may not be able to handle a case that sneaks in. I mean, you're looking at a minority's interest as against the security oh of the wider public. Yeah. Then there's also the case of those who think that our continual stay here mm -hmm. exposes us to the infection and therefore we should be allowed back home, etc. It's a balance... Uh, balancing the issue, I don't know, it's quite a headache for the authorities, I can imagine, but this is why we have forums of this nature. We have people who understand the nature of the virus, mm -hmm. who have dealt with similar strains in the past, yeah. who will be shedding some light on Absolutely. whether, you know, what, what, what should be our position okay. in respect of Ghanaian citizens abroad who are trying to come home. Mm -hmm. I have a common question to ask on this. I mean, is it just China? There are flights coming in and out from of China everywhere. on a daily basis yeah. as we speak. Mm -hmm. So should someone not necessarily be coming directly from China and be going through another country? Mm -hmm. uh, would that also 
would we receive that in a manner as looking at Ghanaians coming in from China? Yeah. Which we, we attend to it with the same seriousness. Mm -hmm. So these are questions we're going to beg our speakers when they come on the program. Mm -hmm. uh, and perhaps when I have the opportunity, I'll talk about the people the who people. be speaking on this forum. Exactly. Definitely we'll touch on that. But then health officials have also said, and this was said last week, mm -hmm. that they intend to ban um, you know, flights that come in from China, especially from the places where it's been confirmed yeah. that there has been coronavirus. And there's also no, saying that... You, I, I've heard, I've yeah. heard uh, one of our speakers, and I think you'll be attending to this issue when it comes to the, mm. uh, onto the program, but he said it's, it makes absolutely no sense. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm in no position to explain his answer, but I think when he comes, he would help us understand why he thinks a policy of that nature is counterproductive. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand the legal implications of this. I mean, if you're going to stop people from coming, even if you're to hold a flight, there are, and when you hold a flight, unlike the Emirati case, which was requested by the Emirati company itself, they yeah. put the bill they, for hosting these mm -hmm. people in hotels, etc. You would have to bear the cost of that if you initiate it. That is what I understand the aviation exactly. sector to, mm -hmm. uh, to operate. So uh, there are ramifications, and yeah. flights are booked to leave here be cleaned for a while, move to another country. So when you impound one, it has implications for travelers yeah. in Across. so many other countries, yeah. yes, outside of Absolutely. your region. So it's complicated. And I think uh, this is why it's important for us to have this conversation. Why can't we? <laughs> they, it on cruise ships. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where, and with, with the population on there being predominantly the citizens, mm -hmm. you, you see, and yeah. there's a cruise liner. Exactly. But the nature of the aviation industry, how flights are, are connected, carrying people from various points to another. There are those waiting in another country, and the anticipation that this flight Connect. would be here. Yes, be and, here. And, and I think it's it's more far-reaching uh, than you would have in the case of uh, a cruise liner. And we'll have an extensive conversation on this uh, between 3 and 5 p.m. here on TV3. And I'm sure Sedem will give us more insight on that as well. And so we first want to know who the speakers are uh, yeah. and um, exactly what they'll be touching on individually you know, before okay. the time and all of that. Yes. We, we are really privileged to have uh, Professor William Kwabena Ampofo. Yeah. He is the head of virology at the Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research. Mm. And he perhaps is the foremost mind on this matter. He was the first to have supervised the laboratory uh, detection of the of first HIV. case of HIV hmm. uh, in Ghana. That was in 1986. And uh, if you look at, look at his profile, he's done much more than that. He's done extensive work on virus influenza mm -hmm. outbreaks, the H, uh, H5N1. Okay. Uh, you know, they have all these names. Yeah, 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 they do. <laughs> he's done extensive work. That is his area, you know. Uh, he's done extensive work also with the Africa Center for Disease Control. Currently, he's the chairman of the Africa Versus Manufacturing Initiative. So if you're going to have anyone speak on this issue. I think he's the foremost in mind. Okay. He'll be a uh, lead speaker okay. at the forum today. We also have uh, Dr. Isaka Yakubu Akparibo. Yes. Uh, he, he's the only aviation medical specialist in Ghana. The only person who specializes in aviation medical. So mm. if basically you're looking at uh, volumes of people, the traffic, the people traffic. moving into the country yeah. through the aviation industry. He, he's the person to speak to. He runs a company called Care Flight. Mm -hmm. and they provide special services to the aviation industry in terms of health. Mm -hmm. uh, he's also Akparibo. Dr. Akparibo is one of our speakers on the program. Uh, then we also have, um, representing the civil society, Dr. Ishmael uh, Norman. Uh, he's the president for the Institute for uh, Security security disasters and emergency okay it's an institution and uh, disaster studies okay so they basically focus on research on uh, on on issues of security emergencies and disaster uh, he'll be here by representing the civil society angle of things also to tell us about our readiness are we really per his assessment and the research they've done yeah and how we've managed we issues of this nature in the past whether we our public health systems are ready to contain an outbreak should it happen we pray that doesn't happen we but you must so. always prepare yeah for the worst especially we, looking at the rudimentary screening process that we have yes. at our ports it's it's very <laughs> basic. People have you know, complained. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah. somehow it looks like the hand of fate. I, I must give credit to those who are working hard also in the background to make sure this doesn't happen. Uh, but we would know by the close of this forum the state of our readiness to yeah. do or to contain an outbreak. So these are the three leading speakers. But okay. we also have representation from the Ministry of Health because of the policy angle of things for uh, the Ghana Immigration Service. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And then also the Ghana Health Service. Okay. They will all be in the audience. And of course, we have the good public. Definitely. Is there a surprised to know how many people have 
detailed understanding of what's happening, and they are all joining us in the forum I see. to bear their minds. Is there a special role Vodafone will be playing later today yeah, as well? So we'll be here as well. I mean, for us, we would also like to know, like he said, how ready are we as a country yeah. to watch this. But the other bit we also need to know is that with all these minds coming together, there definitely will be churning out some ideas yeah. how we can do better Absolutely. going forward. And so for us, that's what we look at yeah. um, okay. gleaning from this as well. So um, a team of us will also be here certainly. to sit in there to listen to uh, the discussion. We're looking forward to that. Forward. And so this is going to stream live on TV and on yes, social media? Yes, it's going to be live on uh, TV3. Okay. Uh, it's also going to be live on all media general platforms, so Nia FM, Akuma FM, Connect FM. I see. And you can also watch it live on uh, online. Okay. 3news.com. Yeah. Nice. Yes. All right. So 3 to 5 p.m. sharp. <laughs> yes. And I'm moderating. So them just had to lock me down some way, somehow. And when they asked me, I, I, I almost said no. Nope. I was like, okay, it's fine. Yay. Because, of course, I also want to contribute my I'm little so uh, quota to ensuring that we find a way out of this particular issue as well. And so we're looking forward to this. And yeah. thank you to yeah. both of you for, t for putting this together. Thank yeah. You, and so 3 to 5 p.m. We're yeah. going live at 3 yep. p.m. Yes. And this is a forum looking at how Ghana can handle such an emergency case as coronavirus if it should ever be confirmed in the country. We're pr praying actually that it doesn't happen. It doesn't yeah, because if it does, I'm not sure what's going to happen. I heard Scary. someone say the temperatures here won't allow it to happen. Well, they're saying yeah, that. You know, that's, it's too that's humid. That's we really that would the like to But it was confirmed in Egypt. But that's the point. And how, so I then, mean, you, you can't compare even our temperature well, here. You know, There's a virus that has survived and a hair dryer. <laughs> Uh, it, it has? Imagine, it has. It survives on a hair dryers. I mean, it's been tested. Mm -hmm. So how can we just re rely on the weather here and say... Well, but they're also saying enough. that it's deadlier in people who are 80 years and above. So ah, maybe 60, okay. 70, 80, that's... Yeah, you're very likely to pass if you... And for people who have cardiovascular diseases and all of that. I but so, so, I don't know, man. But mm -hmm. yeah, we'll find out more. <laughs> We'll find out more. Johnny says the sun has an effect on it. So <laughs> okay. it's, it's not that dry. Oh, Dr. Asari said it. Of I, 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 I see. I have this one, the virologist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, make sure that you tune in to TV3 and all our other platforms as we discuss emerging uh, diseases in the country and what we can do as a country um, to resolve the issue or at least find a way to contain the issue as well. And so I've been speaking to Sedemo Foy. He's the head news planning here at Media General. And Daniela Sirius, external communications manager for Vodafone. Thank you so much for joining.